Thank you for watching Policy and Prejudice. My name is Chris Stevenson. My topic today deals with the continent of Africa, more specifically in Ghana. Back during the late 60s, or I should say late 50s and early 60s, the Prime Minister of Ghana was a man named Kwame Nkrumah. Nkrumah, just like Patrice Lumumba of the Congo, had goals of unifying Africa. What he wanted was to create a United States of Africa. Something the Europeans have done through uh, the initiation of the European Union a, a few years ago. And of course the United States had done it uh, uh, decades ago. What we're dealing with here is Africa having its own independent, uh, being its own independent republic, its own military, its own utilities, its own educational system, and fully supported, uh, supporting itself through its own resources, which are vast. The United States, of course, was not going for that. Several leaders in the United States, uh, including people like John Stockwell, uh, and uh, other people of the CIA, maybe even George H.W. Bush. Uh, some of the influential CIA in the Africa division were not named specifically. Their names are withheld. But they plotted to undermine Nkrumah. They steered away from outright assassination, but they still plotted a coup. Nkrumah was forced to leave Ghana after this uh, sometime in 1966. Why was Nkrumah's plans so thwarted, so hated by the American governments as well as the European nations? Well, of course, uh, people have a problem with Africa supporting itself. Africa is supposed to be this downtrodden, uh, chaotic continent that's full of nations that are unable to support themselves, especially non-South African Sub-Saharan Africa. So, uh, you know, the, the, you just couldn't, they just could not allow this to happen. There's no way. I don't have to go into a lot, uh, to a lot of detail about this. Uh, you all know the, know the deal. Shortly after the assassination of Lumumba, Lumumba was, uh, was murdered, shot, and his body dumped in a vat of acid by CIA operatives. The, an assassination uh, of Nkrumah's plans was then soon implemented, but not as blatantly. They felt the best way to stop Nkrumah was just to try to stop his goal, stop his dreams. So the United States became dream assassinators, uh, more or less. The British government had already been ousted and Krumah went ahead with his plans to use the, uh, the Volta Dam as an energy a cheap energy source so that all the people of Africa can benefit. And that would be the, the foundation. Along, that along with the, uh, their, their natural resource of aluminum. At first, the United States and uh, other countries were receptive to this, but of course uh, they began to plot behind Krumah's back and try to exploit him. That's basically the United States, the, Brit the British, the French, as well as the World Bank. Maybe it was naive for Nkrumah to go to these sources for, for aid, but of course, uh, with the British leaving, where else could he get the, uh, the funding? Nkrumah eventually had to, to leave uh, in Ghana sometime in around, around 1966, after uh, this, uh, this coup took place. Of course, the United States, they, of course, they, it's not hard to find blacks who, are, uh, who would be down with such a twisted plot and uh, would, could, uh, would be strategically placed in these countries to keep them in chaos and, of course, always in need. This is horrible. This information 
comes about as of late through WikiLeaks. Otherwise, we wouldn't have known this. You know, a great man Nkrumah was. He lived until 1972. Today, Africa is still in the same type of state today. It's very sad. Very sad. One thing about this, uh, you know, you, you have people uh, like David Stockwell, or I should say uh, John Stockwell, I forget his name. Maybe George H.W. Bush also played a role in this. You know, a lot of familiar names. Uh, keeping Africa down and doing it uh, without people knowing about it. The general feeling here is Africans, the black Africans, are just too dumb, too ignorant to, to know how to, to move and advance their own continent and, and their own nations. That's not true. They were stopped at every turn by the Western powers. That I would bet my life on. So what's going on here is the, just, just a, uh, the same thing that's been going on in Africa. The story never really changes. Information here that I've, uh, I've gathered says here, after, after uh, being educated in, in the United States, Nkrumah returned to Ghana, returned to Ghana to form his first independent political party. And of course, he became the first uh, black prime minister while, still, while the nation was still under colonial rule. He also formed the Organization of African Unity, or OAU. This is even years before Malcolm X, who, uh, who, who, burned, who owned uh, who formed a similar organization in the United States called the Organization of African American Unity. And he would, you know, his goal was to simply sit to, to make Ghana into a economic player, an international economic player, using his own resources. He wanted to modernize Africa. What a horrible idea, right? So uh, Africa could have been among the most advanced countries or advanced continents in it, you know, with the advanced nations in the world if he were allowed to continue on with this. The CIA's mission was, of course, to, uh, to destroy this industrial revolution. This is really strange. Think about this. The United States wanting to destroy black nations for doing the same thing that the United States American unions had done uh, for the last uh, several hundred years. Very hypocritical, very greedy, very racist. But I urge you to Google Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah Ghana and the CIA plots to, uh, to overthrow uh, those plans. You know, uh, Google CIA, uh, Ghana, Nkrumah, and, as well as coup. You come up with a lot of answers there. My name is Chris Stevenson. Thank you for watching Policy and Prejudice. You all have a good week.